defend their safe lane tower. And unlike the uh, dire offlane tower, this tower is the low these towers are the lowest priority towers in the game because they don't give you too much map control, more so for the dire side because it gives you another entry point into ancient. And I suppose for the radiant side as well. But the safe lane tower on the other hand is a completely different story. Once you lose that safe lane tower, you lose a lot of map control. It's a great way to be the star of the amount of farm. Well that happens, Mladja taking a fair amount of damage but it looks like waveform was used to initiate into that as opposed to finish them off. And suck on these wasn't there to get a follow up. So Wraith King most likely going to be going for Treads into the uh, Blink Dagger. Carl pulled out with the Zip. ESPX caught immediately rotating in Carl. Tries to go in for the laser, but ESPX immediately goes on top of him to prevent that and moves to able to clean him up the Soul Assumption. So it's the Execution Power coming out with the Storm. He's now got that maxed out overload, so Storm Spirit hurts like hell. Looks like he's been going towards the uh, Orchid of Malevolence. So fairly simple build order for him. Pengu, level 7.5, so he's got more, he's actually getting uh, out leveled by um, Ladger despite Ladger's 2 deaths, and looks like he actually gets a good return kill over in the top lane. So, with no points up and static link, no mercy being shown, able to clean that, that kill using the uh, plasma field. And untamed, edging morphing to uh, make good use of the Voodoo Restoration. You usually want to keep Voodoo Restoration on one, he takes a huge amount of damage from that. And Ladger actually might be going to go for a kill over the top Xeno if he decides to really commit to that, but the cast bounces are there. Having that maxed out unstable current I mean, is it's really good recognition coming up from Ledger since Tob Zeno and Sucker and these, so they choose to initiate on him. The purge, the two second purge being applied to both of them will buy um, Ledger enough time to back himself out of there. This is the only reason why uh, Razor works as that safe lane solo when he's outnumbered is the unstable current. And now you've got the Visage Familiars. So Carl, they're just camping in the top lane, they're doing in the mid lane, they're doing everything they can to shut down Carl and prevent him from getting that uh, early boot to travel. Since when ESPX rotates mid, he's gonna zip on and the Familiars come as well. Bird drop lands over on, su on Suck on D, so he takes a fair amount of damage from that. But that's on cooldown, so they know the Visage uh, Familiars are there. And Boy, even yeah. if the uh, drop isn't available, the damage that comes out from them, especially with the Vortex, Radius from the ESP, should be enough. And now that Hong's at level 6, he knocks down your first tower. tower. So this is the power of the draw range. You could actually be opting for uh, Mask of Madness very early on. It's like a, yeah, it looks like we have to be seeing a Mask of Madness. So like a Sniper, Draw Ranger at level 7, if he's able to get a very early Mask of Madness, no one can do anything to her. She will pop it and, and machine gun you down. She's got so much damage coming in from the Marksman, as well as from uh, her ultimate, that she just runs you down. It's very difficult to deal with. Gus being used on Pinko to prevent him from being a Ravage, because Ravage just came off cooldown. Shackles being used, supports are rotating in. Looks like Nada, he's going to be a sacrificial lamb. As Honk says, sorry buddy, I can't do nothing. It looks like Medallion Courage is now up for moves. And ESPX with the Familiars, I'm gonna start split pushing over in the mid lane. The Marksman Aura can be used right now, looks like it was on cooldown, so Precision Aura was used prior. Looks like Carl finally has picked up his booster travels. Bird Drop immediately lands, and ESPX could choose to commit to that, but he doesn't want to, as he knows the support potentially could be rotating in. Top Xeno. Looks like he actually opted for an early point in stats over the Restoration. Since Restoration, you want it, it's not really effective until you hit level 3, level 4. And especially since you don't necessarily have a massive amount of burst damage, you're better off going for the casting and going for the Voodoo Restoration. Hulk playing very aggressively against Pengu. Unfortunately, Pengu is just barely able to make out now there. And Hulk is now out of position. He's using that Mask of Madness, so Poppy Mom's beginning to get out the hell out of Dodge. Smoke Rotation coming up from Top Xeno, as well as Suck on these. Hulk is actually caught out of position now. Cast the Flight is set up, as well as the Death Wall. Unfortunately, Death Wall doesn't provide Flying Fish, so he's juking him out. But it at least force him to go high as Succondees comes in. So good play coming up from Top Xeno and Succondees. Death Wall to keep him in there, and Succondees comes in to flush him out. So stuck between the Death Wall and the Wraith King barreling down at you, you're dead either way. So no TP scroll. Oh, looks like he didn't actually TP out, he could have actually chosen to really uh, TP out a lot time. earlier. But decided not to do so, so Mask of Madness has been revealed, and Draw Ranger takes her first death. So in terms of net worth, ESPX, leave the CS scoreboards. Looks like Shadow Shaman got that uh, creep kill as well, he's almost got his Orchid of Malevolence, about, he'll be having that up in about another 3 minutes at the rate that he's farming. Shadow Shaman will be f finding his Arcane Boots fairly soon. And Mladja doing a lot of work over in that top lane. Since with that maxed out unstable card, it's difficult for them to be able to go with him. Especially since both their supports have only got single target abilities. And Mladja, he's going to be the mech carry for his team. Looks like he actually dropped his uh, Ring of Aquila temporarily. Not too sure what the rationale behind that was. Well, these goes in, tries to go in over an ESPX, but ESPX immediately zips to be the disc runner. And prevents from the cast. Move should be taken forward from the tower right click. Especially with Sakonis leading the chase, but he immediately TPs back on. And ESPX is bottle charging so he can zip on out of there. Since he's got the... he's actually almost out of mana. He's got enough for one zip, and now he's completely dry. And so if he gets caught out with a stun, he's gonna have to save it. So Akonis is using this, so he's debating each other out to try to go in for that zip. Unfortunately, he's caught out now. Ravage committed as well. They really want to bring down the Storm Spirit. ESPX finally takes a fall on Plantronics as well. Now they're stuck caught between the Morphling waveform and gets torn apart. So it looks like Morphling is gonna be going for the Lincoln Sphere. And so the reason why it's not the greatest idea is it's too much greed. Since Lincoln Sphere on the Morphling, it's not a fighting item. Unlike on the Weaver, when you 
Finally, Link has found the Weaver, you say, okay, we can fight now, because I can run in, and they can't really do much to control me, especially with the Sukuchi and the Time Lapse. On Morphling, it's more of a farming item. You, the reason why you, you go for Lincoln's Fair, even if they've got and no real valuable uh, single target spells, is because it gives you very efficient stats, first of all, and it gives you the mana regen and the HP regen, so you can afford to spam out your waveform, you're always going to have mana to be the morph out, and so it's a very powerful uh, farming and defensive item. You can use it aggressively since it lets you play a lot more ballsy, but ideally, if you go for Midas and for Lincoln Sphere, you're not going to be that effective until you're able to uh, farm another item on top of that. So it's probably going to be Midas into Lincoln Sphere and then into the uh, E-Blade. Or it could even just be a casual Perseverance and then go right towards the E-Blade. Since in this game, there's not too many uh, important single target abilities because there's so many ways to break it. You've got the Ether Shot coming up from Nada. You need to break the Lincoln so sure the Vortex flies. You've got the Grave Chill and the Soul Assumption as well. And so there's no critical ability like a Doom or like a Bane or like a Fiend's Crypt coming up from Bane. And they are able to clean up with a shot. Very surprised the SPX took that compared to Honk, but I suppose the advantage of the Storm Spirit is he's one of the most efficient Aegis carriers. So long as you expend all your mana before you die, and before the Aegis pops, once you come back to life with full HP and full mana, you can then convert all that mana to damage. Storm Spirit only sticking with 3 points in the Vortex. You usually stick with 3 until you maxed out your Remnant as well. So you don't want to max out Remnant because it costs too much mana, so it's actually very inefficient for mana for DPS. And you don't want to max out Vortex because you only need 3 points to set up for the Remnant. In some cases, you can choose to max out the overload if you're having if you want to have an easier at time laning. Well, that cripples your killing capability, and it forces you to have to zip directly on top of them. So the a level one remnant's enough to be the proc that remnant. Since otherwise, it's not going to be as reliable. So the most efficient storm through a build is to go for the three points of vortex to guarantee the remnant proc. What, what a range moves gets called out with a ray five blast coming up from suck on D. Death Lord being dropped by Top Zeno, showing no mercy. Gust flies, but they are able to bring him down as Tinker comes in. And Top Zeno should be taken for his ESPX goes ham with the overload. He's actually standing his ground. Missile flies as well. And ESPX is actually out of mana. He's not gonna have enough out of mana to be chasing on him. Reincarnate pops from suck on these, catches out Nada with that ray five blast, and Nada should be taken for untamed. Says your final solution and cuts him down to Hitler Water, really doing a lot of work. And ESPX, he's completely out of mana. He's got the Aegis, but a massive uh, team fight going in favor of I Clan. And because I've got the superior late game lineup, Envy, they're dependent on me to win that mid game and be able to a death ball the way that they play. So I've got the mech now available, so I do have that going for them. As Pengu, he wants to go for Blink Dagger before he goes for mech. Untamed taking a fair amount of damage, I don't have any follow up. Lancer pops the Eye of the Storm before he gets Ray Fire Stun. And that Ray Fire Stun, since there's the unstable current, Suck on these gets poached for 2 seconds. Carl now comes in though, so they might have enough damage to bring him down, especially with the laser missile. Looks like he's rearming to be the guaranteed missile proc, but Untamed just going ham smacking him. Suck on these, throws out cheeky right click. So they are able to clean them up. So Iclan, getting a bit uh, cocky though, since they can't afford to throw away these fights like this. Their lineup is centered around grouping up his five and winning the mid game. But it's difficult to do that when you're against the Tide as well as the Tinker. Especially since Tinker, he had a difficult start, uh, but they weren't, because they had to shift targets and start uh, pressuring the top lane, because they had to place a lot of pressure on Pengu as well, it's very difficult for them to be able to identify who they should go on. If you go on, the, if you try to shut down the Morphling, then Tinker and the and the Tide will be the fine farm and create space. If you shut down the Tide, then the Tank here and the Morphling create space and so on. So it's the advantage of the tri -core lineup, especially two very greedy cores, because it's difficult to identify which one to shut down. Ideally, you want to shut down Tinker and take his towers. And if you're able to take his tattoos early on before the Blink Dagger comes online, it becomes difficult. But now, uh, Carl has picked up his BOT Blink, so he's reached the point of critical mass where he's got the items he needs to be able to keep himself alive. But ESPX, he's the natural counter to him. And so his sole job is to be able to try to pick off Tinker outside the base, so they could go for high ground. Pengu, he's being pinged out. ESPX, he could choose to commit. He doesn't have enough mana for the uh, Ravage. So they decide not to go for it. And suck on these, he's just going to be saving gold until he can find that Blink Dagger. Since Blink on Wraith King is absolutely essential to ensure that you could get uh, a timely Wraith Fire Blast off, especially since uh, Storm Spirit can easily disjoint or prevent from even casting the Wraith Fire Blast on them just because it has such a slow projectile speed. And it's very obvious that Wraith King's going to be stunning here. He has one ability. Top Zeno called out. There's like there. And ESP zips on top of him. Takes that last hit. Pops that haste through. And suck on these immediately TPs back home. He doesn't want to stay. Stick around there. Hell, looks like he really got to rotate in. Throws out the missile. There's a fair amount of damage now. This, so this is why it's so difficult to breach high ground against the tank because he just throws out the missile. There's a lot of work against you. Ledger in the top lane, doing some slow push in front. He's probably going to be going for the Aghanim Scepter ASAP so they can try to uh, slow siege high ground and send him up front. Because they want to bait out a Ravage, an unsuccessful Ravage, over from Nightplane. So if they only catch out Razor and say another hero and they're not able to bring him down in time, it's going to be very difficult. So Razor goes up front, Draw Ranger hangs in the back. So Razor's there to run up at you, forces to deal with him. ESPX running for that march like it was candy, goes in on Carl, suck on these, immediately stuns him and wasn't able to use that Orchid. 
and he actually takes a fall. He wastes the ages. Now Slipper has also been committed. Huge misplays coming up from Envy. Tom's Zeno and Sucker needs an L there. Ray Five Blast is going to be available. Cast this lands well as the Ravage. Death Wall being used. They're making sure it's not for a dive. So the ages completely wasted. Mass Slipper wants. They're doing a lot of work up from Sucker He doesn't have reincarnate, but he's just going ham. He might actually be taking falls in that chair. He's able to bring him down. The Ray Five Dot should be enough to be the kill of Shadow Tower. So there we go. Another takes a fall. Penguin gets cleaned up by the Soul Assumption. And Tom Zeno, he's backing off. He's actually got nothing. And Untamed, he's hunting for him. Catches up Ladger, laser flies whilst the missile, Dap to strike being used, predominantly for the stun time more than the damage, there's only one point, waveforming is on top of him, you get right clicks and you can right click while you're waveforming now, and Tick is finally able to clean them up, so Envy, there's lineups on a run out of a lot of momentum and a lot of steam, especially since they're so sensitive around the mid game, Draw Ranger and he comes in late game, can't do anything against the Tinker and against the Morphling, and looks like Draw Ranger opted for a very early Blink Dagger, Blink Dagger is a fantastic item on the Drow, and similar to the Clinks, you don't have to build, uh, you don't need to build damage on Draw, you get all the damage from your abilities, you don't necessarily need to uh, build utility on Drow, unlike a Clinks, because you've got that silence, and so what you need to build then is you need to build some kind of way to uh, be able to reliably engage and disengage to maintain your time on target. Since Drow Ranger is a very slow hero, you need to get that first hit in with that Frost Arrow in order to be able to stay on top of them, and so the Blink Dagger gives you that functionality. Especially, work, it works very well against the Tide as well. And so if you're first, quick enough with your fingers, when he blinks on top of you, you can blink out and use that. And if you get bait out and disjoint the majority of the uh, Ravage, you can start a fight in a very good position. So it looks like with a quick pause coming out. So hopefully it shouldn't be anything too big. I mean, quickly taking a look at the golden experience graph. Well, we are paused. 5,000 experience lead in favor of iPlan, which is absolutely critical because the pressure, the onus is on NV to be able to break high ground in 35 minutes. Because that's when the lineup starts to taper off. Razor is a very powerful late game carry if he gets obscenely farmed. And Mladja, because he's been the solo safe lane, he has been doing very well, all things considered. But he's not going to be reaching enough farm to be able to go toe to toe against the Tinker and against the Morphling. In terms of gold, 2,000 gold lead in favor of, of NV because I have been taking these towers. But the EXP lead is going to be the critical factor. And especially since, although the advantage they do have going for them is that Iceland they don't have a mech carrier. Tidehunter is probably going to be the mech carrier, but he's not going to be farming it for a while. And the, and the Morphling and the Tenko have gone for Ultra Greed. So Tenko looks like he's going for Dagon, so he's just going to be there to provide damage. Does make a lot of sense, as the Visage and the Shadow Shaman could kill him at the start of a fight. So it makes your rearms a lot more efficient. Since otherwise you wouldn't go for a Sheepstick, but of course the drawback of the Sheepstick is going to be very ungainly build time. Since you need to farm up about 5,600 gold before it becomes effective. Stuck on these, Reincarnate is available. Gets called out with a Visage familiar drop. It should be dropping as well. They're not even needed to drop. There we go. One drops, Reincarnate's forced. Moops comes in, throws out the Soul Assumption, he's going to be a Sacrificial Lamb, eats a Missiles whilst in Waveform. In a very difficult place, they are able to bait out that Reincarnate and waste it. And very unfortunate, it looks like he just hit level uh, 11 from that kill. So if Wraith King had level 2 Reincarnate, that'd be a very worthwhile trade. It's only 160 second cooldown, unfortunately. Since he uh, got that level from that kill, and just skilled up Reincarnate at level 11, 260 second cooldown. That's why when you're playing a 4 position Wraith King, when you hit level 6, you usually want to hold on to your skill point. And, no, and not skill reincarnate immediately. Because otherwise, if you skill reincarnate immediately, and that you're able to get an unsus unsuccessful reincarnate, so you get caught in a position your teammate, you die, your teammates aren't there to be able to capitalize, you lose a five minute window. And so, since you can skill your abilities even when you're stunned or silenced or turned into a pig, you usually want to hold on to your skill point so that when you're in a good position, you say, okay, my team is there to back me up, I don't care if I die, I could go ham. Then you skill your reincarnate then, so it gives you a lot more control, because you can't afford to waste a level one reincarnate. Especially with how long the cooldown is, the whole point of a swap position of a four position Wraith King is to be the control, is to have that reincarnate. Because otherwise, you might as well draft another Espolio with a stun, you'd be a lot more effective. So, if it's such a familiar draw, but he ate that much, so you're taking a fair amount of damage. Untamed might actually be the clean up, especially with the Mask flying through. So, only one bird flying around, doing a, bit, a lot of reconnaissance. So, that's the advantage of the Visage against the Tanker. Eats the Anchor Smash, looks like Anchor Smash actually does uh, pure damage over on the familiar, so with that rework to the Ancients. Lincoln Sphere is now available for Untamed. <coughs> so the advantage of the Lincoln Sphere, of course, is like on a Weaver, because you've got so many ways to be able to keep yourself alive, it makes it very difficult to be able to go for a kill on the Morphling. And since you have the late game assured, you might as well build the late game, because with the Tinker, most chances are the game is going to be going late. Unless if Envy are able to find a very successful team fight, catch Tinker with that, uh, kill him outside the base, and then catch him without buyback. It's the issue with Tinker, it's the reason why a lot of teams choose to ban him out, as opposed to playing with him, is even if the Tinker player is absolutely awful, He's still able to provide so much pressure on the enemy team. ESPX, ECD adapt strong as well, so Ray Fire Blast, he's able to disjoint that. He's disjointing like crazy using that lift, but Penguin just spits on him. So the Gypsy Fish and the Tidehunter jumps on him, hits on the Yank, and then spits in his face and brings him down. Carl immediately blinks the trees for an aggressive march, but they clear out that group wave to create space to prevent them from coming from this angle. So good recognition coming up from Carl. 
It's something that a lot of high level uh, tanker players like to do. When you're pushing, as opposed to simply whacking the tower or throwing a mark from where you are, blink ahead of the creep wave. So you create your team a lot more space for your team. Mass Circle Ward's being used, but they're, they're gonna be wasted, they're gonna be farmed up. There's about 200 gold just fed towards the other team. Carl, Ghost Sept now available, so you come for the Excalibur build. One, uh, they can level one, they go into the E blade. Gives you the much more efficient uh, DPS for your gold. Also, it looks like he's only gone for one point in rearm, so he is going for the Excalibur build. It gives you a lot more efficiency. Ratchet going tandem over on Carl. Should be able to bring him down, especially with the Soul Assumption flying. One more right click needed. Doesn't even need it since you can always choose to commit with the Artist Storm or with the Plasma Veil and Moops. Untamed should be the snack. Now, never mind, the mech is there. Keep him just barely alive. Forced to replicate out, so Morphling's safe. It looks like Moops is going to make it out of there as well. It's a great disengage coming up from MV. Pengu takes out his frustration over the familiars. Somebody should call the SBCA because you're feeding. You're, that's cruelty to animals right there. You should have at least tried to resummon them. But Moops, unfortunately, that was on cooldown. So, no familiars. It's a two minute window for him. Looks like he's going to be the mech carrier. And he's actually got uh, just about enough gold to be the finish it. And so, in terms of uh, map control. Notice that the only Absorber Ward that the Radiant Side has placed there, this is a very defensive ward. They've actually got one placed here as well to provide some high ground vision. So when you lose your tier 1, you usually want to place a ward either here or there, depending on what side you're on, to be able to provide you that extra buffer of vision to make it very difficult for uh, people to rotate in from the side. With a defensive uh, Radiant Ward here to be there to help spawn in any approach coming into the Ancients. So you, the Ancients is going to be the guaranteed comeback mechanic. And Pengu going right for a refresh ward. Pulled out the Gust as well as the Lightning Zip coming in for ESBX. Should we bring him down? And ESBX. Has had some really good plays, also had some questionable plays where he panicked and wasted a huge amount of his mana zipping like crazy there. Pengu simply waited until he was out of mana and blinked on top and gushed in his face. If he'd just done one long zip back home, probably would have kept himself alive. And every time you zip, you lose a percentage of your mana pool. And Honk pops that mask in madness, goes Hong Kong, starts smacking the tower. Looks like Ledge actually took out Tinker in the bot lane. So Razor doing a huge amount of work. He's actually got his items have to complete it now. And that precision aura that's only level one so far, level two now. So once that precision aura gets maxed out, because they have a try, the entire team is ranged. They get a lot of better from that. Because Visage, he actually hits surprisingly hard. Because with that great feel, 64% attack speed, he's actually able to deal a fair amount of deeps, especially with the familiars there to capitalize as well. So the precision aura and the medallion does a huge amount of work. They should be able to take the tattoo in the mid lane and even in the off lane as well. We've got rotation now coming from Penguin Ledger. He's saying, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go for this. If you kill me, so long as I'm able to get the tower, it's gonna be worthwhile." And he might actually, he's gonna TP himself on home. He knows there's no Ravage available, if he at least baits out the Ravage, he should be fine. Ledger, what a player. He'll take that tier 2 like a boss. He TP'd out to see if Pengu had Ravage off cooldown, he'd be forced to expend it to go for a kill. In which case, it guarantees the Roshan. It's a great recognition coming up from him. A lot of players would have backed off immediately. Or tried to stand on their ground and died. But Ledger, really capitalizing on the uh, CD abilities of the enemy team. And creating space. So they're able to get that Roshan. BKB is now up on Honk. And Honk has reached the point of critical mass with Blink, Mask of Man, and BKB. He's ready to fight. They catch up Pengu. Pengu, unfortunately, doesn't have Ravage yet. Got up in two seconds. Fuck on these immediately Blinks on top of him. Turns into a chicken now. What Ravage coming up cooldown for Pengu. He caught up with the Orchid to prevent him from being re engaged. And ESPX is actually almost out of mana. He's got enough mana for one zip. Ravage kills him immediately. Nada as well takes a fall. Untamed shotguns him in the face. So shotgun shells are bad for your health. Moops gets cleaned up by the Death Lords. The Dagon immediately pops him. And Ledger runs back in, he shows up late to the party, didn't quite get the memo, no mass servant wards. They might be able to bring down stuck on these, as ESPX actually cleans it up, so they get two. Untamed as well, taking a lot of damage, he's got the uh, waveform available, he's able to get a great long range uh, waveform out now there. So able to disengage quite successfully, so in Envy, they actually break dead even with that, because they lost Aegis and they used up a vast majority of their ultimates to ensure that. Looks like the 10 second BKB charge wasn't even used, a draw ranger, that was without the BKB. If they had that BKB, it could have been a completely different fight, but the great ravage coming up from Pengu. Bones off the Aegis of ESPX, and caps up the Royal Rangers, so they're able to bring it down. And looks like Tinker, 2300 gold before he gets that E-Blade. And Morphling as well, he's gonna, looks like he actually picked up Yasha, so Morphling might not even be going for that shotgun build, instead going for more of a right-click Morph build. But the drawback to that, is Morphling's biggest strength, is if you go for the E-Blade build, you're guaranteed to start a fight 4v5. And if they decide to jump on you, since you can Morph while you're stunned, they're not going to be able to kill you anyway. So it's a very cost-efficient item on the Morphling. Because it gives you a lot of stats for its gold, and it gives you a huge, a massive increase in your killing power, especially when you also have a lot of magic damage coming out. So you can, uh, you're guaranteed to be able to pick off their backline heroes from the very beginning. Tinker goes into Shadow Shaman, Morph goes into Visage, and the Penguin's able to capture them out of the Ravage, they're dead. So you start a fight without the backline, the enemy team's forced to break and disengage, so ESPX is going to zip on down there. But with the Blink Tag available from Wraith King, Cyclone needs to immediately re-engage. And so I clan, they're putting themselves in a very good position. EXP is completely even now. Actually, it's going in favor of, of Envy. And gold leads um, heavily in Envy's favor. So 7,500 gold lead. But of course, we're reaching the point, we're going to reach the point in about seven minutes where Envy's lineup starts to plateau. 
since the Razor, even though he's got a lot of uh, farm, looks like he's going for a refresher orb, you usually have about a 35 minute window to try to breach high ground against the Tinker. Because once you're past that 35 minute mark, that's when uh, Tinker and Tinker's team are strong enough that it's very difficult to breach it, unless you catch him outside that base. And so, we could actually be seeing some uh, high ground wards being placed there. In Dota 2, unlike Dota 1, you actually can place wards off the map, and that provides flying vision. So this is something that a lot of teams like to do. In the KDL, I believe it was as Zephyr, they actually placed the ward here to provide flying vision so that when MP, who was playing as the tanker, would BOT in, they'd be able to see him rotate in and immediately be blink on top of it and go for a kill. They actually even drafted Nature's Prophet and the Life Stealer, so they had that global infestation bomb just to kill the tanker. Of course, MP did... Uh, Looks like Zephyrface actually did lose that game up against po Zephyr actually did lose that game against Pokerface simply because they the game was dragged out to the 60 minute mark and Tinker reached the point where he could go 1v5 against their entire team so long as the rest of his team were able to create space for him. And the Earthshake and the Old Titan did a huge amount of work. So we've got another pause coming out. Just gonna take a quick look at inventories while we are paused. So Carl, gonna be going towards the E Blade. Has been shut down fairly significantly by the amount of deaths he's taken, especially since he also has to hold on to buyback. Suck on these. He's picked up the Blink Dagger, so probably going to be going for a Blade Mail, especially with the uncontrolled AoE coming up from Envy. Top Zeno, he's going to be going towards uh, the Aghanim Sept of his own, so the Skrillex Death Ward, that 900 bounce range. Pengu going to be going for a Refresh Orb. Looks like Mech still isn't up for Moops, he actually had the mana to the uh, Gold to finish it. Looks like, actually, never mind, it's a bit of a panic buy, since Mladja already has Mech. I've just, I've just realized this, so it's just a value buckler. Since Bucklers, uh, stacking Bucklers actually is a fairly effective thing with the mech, because the uh, armor aura stacks. And Visage can always use a bit more armor, so it looks like he's going for a Pipe of Insight instead. Would have preferred maybe the Aghanim Scepter uh, over the Pipe, but that being said, still not a bad uh, pickup on him. They are grouping up in Force, Melancho, pops the level 3 out of the Storm of the Aghanim Scepter, so it's 3 um, jolt per second. You can't man fight against the Razor with the Eye of the Storm up, especially once the Aghanim Scepter comes online. Because if it's only hitting one target, you're losing 3 armor a second. You can't man fight him, just because, not even including the damage coming up from the Eye of the Storm, the negative 3 armor per second alone is enough reason not to fight man fight the Razor, especially since he can get the leash off. So the reason why Razor is such a powerful hero is he just shuts down their carry. So you, you run him not so much as a carry, more as an anti-carry, looks like they actually clean up untamed. Over the one lane, so they force the buyback over Morphling. And there's a huge spree, massive ravage coming up from Penguin. They do catch out one, so Nada takes a fall. ESPX zips on Nada, Moops gets cleaned up. Waveform flying, they do have the adapter strike, and ESPX! It's gonna be caught in our position once again, does take a fall. Suck on these, is body blocking him just in case. And the play's coming out from Penguin, the little Penguin that could. Catches out four of their team with that ravage, sets up the fight. Gosh, now flies over on Honk. Honk wasn't there, he's able to blink himself on out back home. And they're able to clean up the, uh, the Storm Spirit. So while Storm Spirit does count a, a tank in the sense that you can go for these aggressive uh, pickoffs, because the Morphling is there, if Storm Spirit zips in, since he's the only form of initiation, Envy uh, in a disadvantage when it comes to these team fights, because they've got the counter initiation coming up from Tengu, and they've got the initiation coming up from the Storm Spirit. And so Envy, because they lack the ability to be able to go in and start these fights, since the Drow Ranger sure as hell doesn't want to blink on the enemy team. Even if she gets a great gust off, just because she puts herself at risk, she wants to go in when the Storm Spirit goes in as well. So that while Envy have a lot of pickoff power, and in terms of 5 on 5 team fights, because they lack that ability to be able to initiate and start a fight on good terms, on favorable terms for them, it's very difficult for uh, them to be able to try to win these fights, or win them very cleanly, since uh, I clan, if, even if they do lose a fight, they're always trading. And they're more than happy to trade, since the longer the game goes, the higher their chances of success are, especially with the Tinker and the Morphling. So Morphling could just be another farming item, the value Yasha, since Yasha also can be considered a farming item, it's a very cost efficient item. And all the edgy carries usually is a fairly good uh, item in general, especially on a hero like a Morphling since he is very slow. It gives him a lot of cheap stats to uh, pump up his adapter strike. But ideally you want to be going for that uh, E-Blade, even if you already have another E-Blade carry, just because it's a very cost efficient item for Morphling and it gives you that alpha strike advantage of being a start of fight, 4v5. And if the game does go late enough, that Razor becomes incredibly tanky, you could just double E-Blade them. So you've got your E-Blade, then Tinker E-Blades, then you E-Blade them again. Looks like, uh, Pink, looks like, uh, Carl decided to screw it, can't go for E-Blade, just has a value Ghost Scepter to keep himself alive. Decided to max out his Dagon, so they know they're going to be fighting very early on, since so NV, they're not going to rest on the lorries and wait for I Clan to be able to continue farming. They have to continue to go for these pickoffs, continue to go for these towers, and try to break high ground. They've got about a 4 minute window before the game really starts to slip out of their control because their draft starts to plateau. Especially with the pipe pickup on Visage, it does make a lot of sense because there's a huge amount of magic damage coming out from them. But of course the drawback on the pipe, especially a pipe on a hero like a Visage, is you have to uh, use it before you go in. It's like putting on a condom. If you don't put it on before you go in, it's completely useless. The mech you can use it reactively 
And so even if the enemy team jump on you, as so long as the mech carrier doesn't die, or as so long as your teammates don't immediately get killed before the mech goes off, you're good to go. Top Zeno actually replicated up, so he's going to be sent out to try to draw some spells out. They could choose to go on them, they don't know that's real, they... Looks like ESPX wastes the Electrum Vortex, decides to commit to it, wastes the Orchid as well. Replicate is very tricky, because the Illusion, unlike every other Illusion ability, they take 100% damage, as opposed to 300. And so it's very easy to be in a mind game up enemy like that. So it's the added advantage on the Morphling. Can you use Morphling as a pseudo counter to Viper? Because if you replicate the Viper and hit him, Corrosive Skin will proc on the Viper onto the Replicate. That will then proc Corrosive Skin back onto Viper. And so Viper will always be snared. And because it's a Replicate, you don't really give a damn the Replicate snared. Uh, there's a Storm and Massive Morph can use, they have to defend this. If they lose high ground, and the able to take this game. So it's still a very close game for both teams. Stuck on the turn, though, Chicken. Gusted back, landed the standing ground. Penga comes in, unfortunately, stuns immediately. Fantastic Orchid coming up from him. He does get the Ravage off as the Kraken Shell purges off. Does catch out three. Death Wants doing a huge amount of work. Should be able to bring down Moves Hong. Standing ground that BKB, but he's been caught out. He's left the last man standing. Kyle blinks on top of him to be the body block. Stuck on these has another way for available, and Untamed cleans him up. So I Clan, despite being behind in gold and in experience, able to turn the tide. 2,500 uh, gold lead uh, now in favor of Envy as opposed to 5,000, 2,500 experience lead. And with that, Tick immediately BOT's top to apply a pushing presence. They still have tier 1s up, they're pinging up mids, they're gonna go for an all in push in the mid lane to try to force their buyback over on Hong, but most likely, probably not gonna be buyback mid, at least do a fair amount of chip damage. Looks like familiars are gonna be scouting out Roshan, and it all boils down to the initiation power of Iplan. Tengu was able to really set up that fight, even though he got immediately orchided, because ESPX chose to hit him and pop the Kraken Shell, is the reason why Titan is banned, is he's always guaranteed to get a Ravage. If you have a Blink Dagger, it doesn't matter if they stun you, there's no bit unless they doom you, a Kraken Shell with a Pokemon. And so you're guaranteed to get, to get that Ravage off. The reason why Titan players choose to max the Kraken Shell as early as possible, so they, it decreases the HP buffer. Nada gets cleaned up by the Great Fire Blast. with Carl being able to style all over him with that Dagon. Moops coming in as well. He's going to be very careful. Got a buyback now coming up from Ladger. They do breach it. ESPX zips all the way in from the Fountain comes in. He's going over on Top Zeno. Pops that BKB. Suck on these dice. The Eye of the Storm. Looks like no reading kind of available. Top Zeno should be taking fall. And Morphling able to replicate himself on out there. So ND barely able to hold on to it. Carl as well takes a fall. And he goes on top of Honk. But Honk pops some arms. Scaly is that's Oh, that's got to hurt. So throws coming up from both teams. And it's a very even game. The team is able to catch out. If they catch out Kyle without buyback, they can breach high ground. Since they don't have Ravage available yet. Orchid will be up in 200. Uh, sorry, not Orchid. Uh, Refresher will be up in 250 more gold for the Titan set. So they do have the double uh, Ravage to deal with. But the drawback to going Refresher Orb on Titan set is when you have the level 3 Ravage, you just barely have enough mana to be able to. Uh, Use the Ravage, use the Refresher Orb, and Ravage again. So it means that you can't use an Axe Smash, you can't use a, a Gust, otherwise you're going to be out of mana. And so it just turns Titan to a one-trick pony, which in this case is fine, because you've got the team fighting presence coming out from... Why well, I say that, Tanker actually gets called out of position and killed. And you don't... Because you've got the damage coming out from the Tanker and from the Morphling, you just need to that lockdown. But because Titan is an Anchor Smash, this will be huge in the work. It's a bit of a, a risky trick, uh, trade off Back on these, goes over and Ladger and Ladger. The unstable current, able to purge him off, and the Eye of the Storm zoning him out quite effectively. Got 5 charges already, loses 5 armor. So the advantage on the Razor, up against the Wraith King, is Wraith King's always going to be uh, eating a huge amount of damage from the Razor, just because if he tries to stun him, he's snared for 2 seconds of the purge. And Mladja is slow sieging, he's doing everything he can to try the whole, uh, breach that high ground. Suck on these things, he messed him up to damage that, Blade not doing a lot of work, but they're able to get a return kill, untamed, turn to a pick, ESP is dropping everything he can, they're able to drop 2, Reincarnate is coming in for Suck on these, got that blink to get available, ESP should be a zip on himself on out of there. Suck on these, unfortunately gets fogged out, throws out a red 5 blast over Moops, and Moops, he's gonna be the one taking all the hatred from the enemy team. He does die to the dot damage, so they are, they do, able to successfully hold on to their melee racks. And the next Roshan engagement should be to swing the tide, because despite the golden experience lead, it's a very slight lead for both teams. So whoever's able to win the next fight, if they're able to get Roshan, it guarantees that you should be able to win this engagement. And looks like Morphling actually opted to go for Man Style, so going for more of a, a traditional right-click uh, right build over the Morphling. The advantage of that is it gives you a lot of pushing power, and Morphling does right-click exceptionally hard since he got 1.6 base attack time. The drawback is, once again, you lose that Alpha Strike capability, but I suppose they they assume that Tinker can provide that initial burst damage, so they just need Morphling to provide a lot of right-click power. So the drawback of the Shotgun Morph is you can't really engage, since you want to have as many stats and agi as possible, you have very low HP, so you want to hang back, initiate with the E-Blade, and then try to, if you're not able to kill someone immediately, you can't just run and start wrecking from people. Unless, as you're wrecking against support, who can't really do anything to deal with you. They're able to take that first to the racks at the back of that, as Madja, no buyback available. 
And our high clan are going to immediately back themselves back on. They don't want to overcommit, but they know what happens when you overcommit. The advantage of the Drow Ranger, though, is she could activate the Precision Aura whenever they catapult the Siege Unit up. And they could use that to continuously apply uh, chip damage over to the bot lane. Looks like they're grouping up for Roshan. Roshan is up. They're going to try to take it. And while that's happening, Moops using his familiars to try to uh, take out the range racks. That actually might be to do so. And I clan they're not taking any chance. They immediately back off. So Drow can pop the Precision Aura right now, if she wants to. And the Familiars can go and try to clean them up. The Carl immediately spamming up the Mask Mirror Drive Ops Familiars. Going in on them, he actually should be able to bring down one, if not two. Looks like Familiar immediately resummon coming out. So very surprised they opted not to go for the Aghanim Scepter since you've got that synergy coming in with the Precision Aura. But looks like uh, Envy should be able to take that Roshan. Fairly uncontested. They are coming in now. Sakonis comes and pops that Blade Null. It immediately gets turned into a chicken. Latcher goes in. He pops the Eye of the Storm. Massive one can use. Great right, three man Ravage. He's got that Refresher all these. He's definitely got that too. Moves immediately drops. Looks like Hog also took a fall. Buyback coming in from Nada. ESPX. Stun lock to all hell. He's just barely able to zip himself down there. He zips himself again so he doesn't die to the dot damage. Sakonis and Morphling are able to bring down um, Ledger. They farm up the Master Open Wards. They don't have buyback up on Ledger. Once again, what it boils down to is so they're going to take that Roshan. So great disengage and re-engage coming up from High Clan. Pengu using that, uh, showing off the double refresh ult, he noticed that he didn't use any abilities aside from the Ravage since he knew that he wouldn't have enough mana to get a uh, throw out even an Anchor Smash. So he's able to get that double Ravage set it up, he called out three heroes twice, so able to immediately start a fight on favorable terms. And so MV, despite having a very powerful drop, because they lack the initiation, it becomes very difficult for them to be able to uh, win these fights. Even though they have the Golden Experience lead, although Golden Experience is now starting to move in favor of iClan, just from that one fight, they've now got a 10,000 Experience lead, and you've got about 1,000 uh, Gold lead, which is fairly negligible. It's the Experience lead, it's a really critical factor. So it just goes to show you what happens if you let the game go late and the importance of initiation. So NV, because they opted for a bit of a pocket threat with the Draw Ranger uh, Visage combo. And despite Ledger and the Honk having very good time in their lanes, the storm through because he can't zip in on his own. He needs someone there to back him up. It's very difficult to pick off the tango. Suck on these, jumps in. He's got reincarnate, so he doesn't really give it that. He's got level 3 reincarnate as well. So he's got a 60 second cooldown on reincarnate if he does. He gets soul assumption down. And it looks like he chopped cheese to be able to keep himself back. Hell and hardy. Man style illusion, so he can love the uh, split pushing over on that range racks. So they're able to slow siege. They should be able to hold on to their seconds in their racks, and high clan are taking no chances. They back off. They know that, they've, that the game is in their hands because they've got the late game. Uh, draft, all they have to do is not throw. So they're gonna take what they can, back off immediately, choose not to overcommit. Looks like E-Blade is now up for Tinker, he wants to hold on to buyback as well. Because the only way uh, Envy can try to win this game is if they catch out Kyle outside the base and catch him without buyback. He's got buyback now, so long as he's able to get one kill before he dies. Since he, I believe he's got the majority of his gold is in reliable gold. Yeah, he's got enough reliable gold that he should be the buyback if he dies. e is now available, and so the lineup of I-Clan looking very scary. Tink has now reached the point of critical mass, where not only is it difficult to kill him with the uh, boots of travels as well as the blink dagger, he's now got enough damage that he can, he's guaranteed to be a start of fight 4v5. So even though they don't have a shotgun coming in from Morph, he's acting more as a conventional uh, right click carry then, and he's more than happy to do so since he still does do a huge amount of uh, magic damage with the adapter strike, since he could always choose to adapt to strike whatever target uh, Kyle is e-bladed, since the e-blade ethereal form does amplify, it amplifies magic damage from everyone. Also works both ways. So if Morphling E Blade someone gets Soul Assumption, he's gonna be taking extra damage. For the smoke rotation coming from Envy, they really need to go for a pickoff. And they're picking out Kyle. Carl. Kyle's been spotted out with the uh, Ghost Step. They go in on him. Looks like Nana Blinks as well as ESPX. They should be able to bring down Kyle. Kyle does have buyback though, but he might be forced to expand it. Envy, they just bought themselves a window of opportunity. This is the advantage of the lineup. They've got very powerful pickoff power. Since they've got the Storm Spirit in the base out these ganks. Moops can be everywhere with the familiars. They still have hold have held on to their tail one, the bottom lane. So it's talking about this tower being the lowest priority tower, and yet this is the only tier 1 tower still left in the game. Because none of the team is really valuing it too much. Honk looks like he's been going towards a uh, butterfly. They're stacking as much agi as possible to amp up that precision aura. Since when he, he's able to use that to be the split push, so we'd like to see Honk using his uh, precision aura a lot more to be able to help set up, facilitate pushes. Or to push out the creep waves when you're uh, fighting the lane. So that way, just through split pushing presence, creeps are able to apply damage to towers. Pengu. Some high level plays coming up from him. And Sam and Sokka D is taking a little picnic, hiding up in the ramp. They're essentially acting as living wards, even though they do have a ward place there. Sokka D has been pinged out. Now picked up a Heaven Talbot. So his sole job is to shut down um, Ladger, since Ladger is not going to be going for a BKB anytime soon. And so even though the Either Storm damage is going to be enough, being able to disable his right click damage, which is fairly substantial with that Precision Aura, is going to be a great boon. Or they can at least wait until Honk, because BKB wears off. It's only 6 seconds now. 
and catch our draw ranger. Since draw ranger, unlike the razor, he doesn't. He can't do anything. He can't hit people. So on these comes in. He only drawing punch fires. Pops and Tangle comes and catches up the entire team with a five man rabbit. Untamed goes up with two. He pops the refresher orb. He goes around another rabbit. Catches out three again. It catches out four. Actually, Moops caught out. They clean. They clean up Honk. And that taking a huge amount of focus fire. Suck on these. Got Reincarnate. Hasn't even used it yet. The E blades coming online. Untamed. Uh, that strike from the face. And now an E blade. Dragon combination comes and they completely wipe enemies. I clan the lineup. They reach the point of no return. What's difficult for an uh, NB to be to try to win this. Just because uh, Tinker, he's still got buyback available, he didn't have to buy back for that. And the only way they could try to break high ground and take a set of racks is if they kill Tinker outside the base and catch him without buyback. So all Tinker has to do is just have money for buyback. Even if he gets caught in a position, so long as he has enough money for buyback, he's going to place enough pressure on MV that's going to be difficult for them to try to end the game. And iClan is going to go right for tier 4s, so they want to clean up that melee racks over the top lane, so they've got two lanes of racks pushing in at once. And then you could just go for tier 4, since I've got the tier 1 still up in the bottom lane, looks like Carl. He's going to be split pushing the bottom lane to apply some pressure. But because I've got a 20 second window before Honk is online, and because I'm Ledger, he's dead for 40 seconds. They do have buyback available on Drow, but he doesn't want to buyback in this early on, especially since you don't have buyback on Ledger. They're going for tier 4s, and this could be game. Carl comes in, he plays ESPX, ESPX immediately zips on home. So the, uh, it really does boil down to the lack of initiation over an NV because they have a great pickup power. Carl actually comes up out of position, pops the BKB over an ESPX and doing everything he can to try to bring down Carl. Carl does have buyback though. Pengo comes in, doesn't have Ravage. So they are able to clean up one. They actually are defending very nicely. Circle on T's actually fountain diving, so that's not your base. So let's turn around, kill Moops. So the side T's easier prey. He's got that reincarnate though, so he's just buying space while they start smacking at your tier fours. Untamed, he's the real threat. Looks like he did opt for uh, E Blade, so he's got an E Blade of his own. The double shotgun. They're locking down Sakon but they're ignoring him. He's not the priority target, they don't really care if they kill him. What they really care about is Untamed. Untamed, as our replicate's actually on cooldown, he does have the Aegis, they might be gonna bring him down. Ladger, he's packing himself up, as Untamed just stands his ground, shotguns him in the face. Sakon these, let's get cleaned up by Shadow Shaman, so Shadow Shaman is able to bring him down. Untamed, very low armor, it's the power of the Eye of the Storm, especially with the refresh royalty. Pengu, he does have Ravage yet. Cast of Justice, bouncing back and forth between Ladger. Untamed, they can frame down damage on terms with Chicken. Is the Shackle on top of him as well, so he should be able to bring him down, but he does have buyback. And so Envy, they have to go for a Hail Mary push through the mid lane, but there is buyback available for Carl and uh, for Untamed, and Untamed immediately buys back. Carl, he's going to play a little bit more risky, he's going to wait for as long as possible. Morphling, if he wants to be really cheeky, he can replicate one of his allies when it's off cooldown, buy Boots of Travels, so unfortunately he doesn't have enough gold for that, and just go for straight to the throne. Moves lead the charge, since Gravekeeper's Cloak only breaks on instances of hero damage, and so you can use this to tank towers. Looks like Suck on D's and Tom Dino's supports have bought back. Carl is online in 10 seconds, and Envy, it's do or die. If they win this engagement, they're able to catch out uh, at least the more for Untamed without buyback. And Suck on these, he's got Reincarnate once again. The full position rate the human rock, shotgun flies. Tango gets a great uh, four man rage. He actually catches out the entire team once again. Tango wins love. Death Wall of the Agonim Scepter completely destroys them. And that should be game. They don't have buyback up on ESPX, it's their only reliable way to be to catch out Carl. And Suck on D's going ham. He could YOLO and blink at their entire team because he knows that there's nothing they could do. If he dies, he's just gonna play some Linkin Park, come back to life without reincarnate. And that's smacking you full. In fact, if he dies, it provides it's actually better for uh, his team if he dies, because he's provi at least providing that 75% snare. And Envy, because I forced out buybacks, I clan they don't really want to commit to this, they're still respecting Envy because they know they're a very aggressive and very powerful team. You never want to make a mistake, because this is the drawback of if the game goes to late game. A single mistake is enough to end it. Honk, it's one uh, E-Blade shotgun combo, almost dies off the back of that. Pops his Master Man, so Carl might have actually overextended. He's overstayed his welcome. Nada's coming in, he wants to catch him out with the blink, but Carl's blink actually be coming up cooldown a lot earlier. So the advantage of the boots travel move speed, so that level one, uh, level three rearm to one second rearm time. He's just gonna keep blinking himself on down there. So close, but no Siggy. Nada really wanted that. Had four staff up as well. They do have the double Eye Storm coming up cooldown very shortly. But Iclan, they decide to play it safe. They're going to go for the other towers, get themselves a lot more gold. Since the tier 1 and tier 2 at this point, they're just giant stacks of gold with these stacked open. The huge influx of gold, about 1,500 gold lead every single time for your team, every single time you smack down a tower. And suck on D's, lead the charge, Heaven's Halberd up on them, he has seen me stack. For a 4 condition rate thing. So they continue to persist through their uh, bond lane. And with two sets of racks down, they can't recover from Mega Grief. Pengu, no Ravage up yet, so they're going to back off. They're playing it by the numbers, they don't want to give away anything for free, they don't want to put themselves in a situation where they might lose the game because of one misplay. And so this is why late game, it's, it's a critical stage. It's a single mistake can decisively end the game, so you can see the difference between the uh, experienced pro teams, such as IG, they don't make a single mistake. That's the reason why they're so good. 
uh, in the competitive scenes. Why Death Wall is so effective from newbie as well as from Michi is they shut out the enemy team, they take out all their tier twos, they start from gold, take out all their map control, and then gradually just farm up the next set of items before committing in. They never want to overcommit because that gives them a chance to be the recover. So they shut down any potential chance that the enemy team has to be the recover and re regain some kind of control of the game. And then once you are so far ahead that you know that's almost impossible for you to be able to lose that next engagement, then you go in. So it boils down to Ike Land, getting that uh, Titan to be pick, pick up. To the first pick Titan on Pengu, even though they were able to shut him down fairly effectively. Just because Titan is so damn effective in the engagements, Pengu's gotten 4 or 5 man ravages this game. So he's really been doing a mass amount of work over in Envy. He can suck on these guys in, wait for the enemy team to uh, engage on him, and then Pingu comes up as a follow-up. So he's never initiating on his own. They're using suck on these as a retard mag to blink in, draw as much fire as possible, get them to group. Since when he blinks on top of you, you either abandon the hero, in which case you start a fight, you start the next fight 4v5, because you can kill one of the supports, or you have to commit. And when they commit, then Pingu comes in and cleans up. Suck on these comes in now, goes over and moves, and even seems to force it back off. Pumpkin's disarmed, pops the uh, BKB, so he's able to at least survive the ravage. And the Agonim steps there, uh, his death wall cleaning up. Skrillex up with that death wall, able to clean up too. Lajan, no buyback up on him. Suck on these going in, now the drop mass over one's desperation. GG well played, being called. And looks like iClan in the grudge match, Envy knocked them down to lose bracket. They pulled their way back up to the top, so they started from the bottom, now they're here. 48 minutes in, iClan, they're gonna be moving into the next weekend. They're one of your top 8 teams. So GG, well played to both of them, and I believe that should be it for today from my end. There will be the cast of 1v1 show match series starting at 9, so yours truly, as well as all the other casters from today, including Omega Kai, I Am A Rose, uh, Grok, who I believe was the caster for uh, the E-Bracket, and so on, will be duking out 1v1 with open mic. So will be a lot of trash talking coming. So thank you for listening, I'm 49, community shoutcaster for the aspect of gaming, uh, Dota 2 community crackdown, you can follow me on Twitter, 49Dota, on Twitch, just 49. And on YouTube, I'll be looking to upload VODs for the first weekend, so I think there was a bit of an issue with the uh, Steam ticket, so these games aren't, not, aren't going to be available through the ticket, for whatever reason, but the next weekend should be available, so I'll look to upload VODs sometime throughout the week. But that should be it for now. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more.